John Deere's GS Series and Premium Commercial Walk Behind Mowers help you mow large areas with better productivity and quality. As a John Deere customer, you are important to us, so we are offering this program to help you operate our commercial walk behind mowers smarter and safer. We will cover five areas including general safety, the controls for both types of our walk behinds, things to do and check before mowing, how to start and run the mower, and what to do when you are finished mowing. This program does not replace your printed operator's manual. So before mowing, familiarize yourself with the safety and operation section of the printed manual. Let's start with a look at safety. Remember, you are responsible for your own safety as well as the safety of people and property around you. To protect yourself, wear the right clothing. This includes sturdy work shoes, pants, shirts, and jackets that fit closely, work gloves, safety glasses to protect your eyes, earplugs for noise protection, and a hard hat where appropriate. Before using the machine, inspect to make sure guards and shields are securely fastened and make any necessary adjustments such as height of cut. Also, be sure to read the warning decals and replace any decals that are damaged. Before mowing, Always walk around the work area and pick up debris or other objects that may be laying in the mowing area. When you are mowing, stay focused on what you are doing. Don't distract yourself with things like music headphones. You should be paying attention to the machine you are operating and to the terrain you are mowing. Be careful to maintain good footing on wet, bumpy, or sloped areas. It's preferable to wait and mow wet or sloped areas when the grass is dry. Avoid mowing near bystanders. Whenever possible, mow with the discharge chute pointing away from windows, walkways, or high traffic areas. If you have to walk away from the mower, stop on level ground, shift to neutral, engage the parking brake, disengage the PTO, stop the engine, and remove the key. We'll talk more about safety as we move through the rest of this program. Now let's get familiar with the controls on both walk-behind mowers. We will start with the GS belt drive units. The fuel shutoff valve is located below the console. Switching this valve to on lets fuel flow to the engine. The key switch is located on the console. When starting an electric start model, turn the key to the first or run position and continue turning to the start position. When starting a recoil start model, Turn the key to the first or run position only and slowly pull the handle until you feel resistance. Then pull the rope fast and steady to start the engine. The choke knob is also located on the console. To choke the engine, pull up on the choke knob. To open the choke, push the knob down. On the console near the choke is the throttle lever which controls engine speed. To increase speed, push the lever forward. To decrease engine speed, pull the lever back. The speed selector lever controls the forward and reverse speed of the machine. Of the five forward speeds, one is the slowest and five is the fastest. As you mow, you can shift on the go between all forward speeds. Always stop your forward movement before pulling the reverse lock toward the speed selector lever and shifting into reverse. Always be sure the reverse lock is fully seated in the neutral notch on the speed indicator plate. See the manual for instructions on how to adjust the lock lever. To engage the PTO and power the cutting deck for mowing, hold the operator presence bale down, push the throttle lever to at least one half speed, pull the PTO knob up, then push the throttle to full. To disengage the PTO, push the PTO knob down. You must always hold the operator presence lever down against the handlebars to keep the blades rotating for mowing. If you release the operator presence lever, the engine and blades will stop automatically. You steer the mower using the handbrake levers. Each lever works independently of the other. To turn left, squeeze the left lever. To turn right, squeeze the right lever. To stop the mower, squeeze both levers. Then push the lever locks forward with your thumbs to lock the brakes for parking. To release the locks, pull up on the brake levers. 
See the manual for instructions on brake adjustments. Now let's take a look at the controls on the premium walk-behind mowers. Many of the controls work the same as on the GS models, so we will just point out their location unless the operation is different. You will find the fuel shutoff valve on the rear of the fuel tank. Turn the pointer down to open the shutoff valve. The key switch, PTO knob, hour meter, low oil pressure indicator, and choke are all located on the console. If the low oil pressure light illuminates while you are mowing, stop the engine immediately. The throttle lever and the shift lever are found on the front of the console. Just like the GS units, there are five forward speeds, a neutral and reverse, and you can shift between the five forward gears on the go. Remember to stop your forward movement before shifting to reverse. The premium models have a knob to control the PTO just like the GS units. The premium models also have traction control levers mounted on the console. When you depress these levers, they engage the traction drive system. In emergency stop situations, release the levers to automatically engage the park brakes and disengage the PTO. The turn brake levers are located on the handlebars. Just like the GS models, you'll use them to steer the premium walk-behinds. Unlike the GS models, you have to engage the traction lever before these steering brakes will work. The neutral lock levers let the operator have a free hand without releasing the turn brake. Push the levers forward to engage the lock and pull them back to disengage the lock. Before mowing, unlock both neutral lock levers or the mower will turn in place when you engage the traction lever. Please refer to the operator's manual for more information on the location, use, and adjustment of the controls. This ends part two. Now let's talk about some things you should do and check before going out to mow. Before starting each day's mowing, you should check the fuel level, check the tire pressure, check the engine oil, check the height of cut, and test the safety systems. And on the GS models with 36 inch decks, you should also check the mower timing belt for proper adjustment. Let's cover each of these checks one at a time. To check the fuel level on either model, remove the fuel cap and look inside the tank. You will see that the tank has molded steps showing the approximate amount of fuel that is left. You should refuel at the end of each day's mowing to prevent condensation buildup in the tank. More on refueling later in the program. Next, always check the tires for damage and proper air pressure. With an accurate tire gauge, check to be sure the drive tires are inflated to between 15 and 28 PSI. The premium model caster wheels should be inflated to 45 PSI. To test the tires for proper inflation, drive the mower forward. If the mower wanders left or right, Add air to that side or reduce air to the opposite side, but stay between the recommended pressures. To avoid injury when inflating, use a clip-on chuck and long extension hose so you can stay to the side. See the manual for more safety precautions before inflating the tires. Next, check the engine oil and add the correct amount if the oil is low. To continue, always check the height of cut before you mow. See the manual for instructions on changing the mowing height. On GS belt drive models with the 36 inch decks, the mower blades are timed to stay at a right angle or perpendicular to each other. To check the timing, remove the belt shield and note the position of the drain holes on the spindle sheaves. These drain holes are aligned with the mower blades under the deck. This means the holes will indicate the position of the blades. If the blades come into contact with a hard object, they may need realigning. The manual has information on how to do this realignment. You should also adjust the timing belt tension. To do this, loosen the two lock nuts on the top of the idler arm. Next, tighten the adjustment nut until the washer lines up with the end of the indicator. 
Then tighten the lock nuts on the idler arm. Check the operator's manual for specific adjustment intervals. Both the GS and Premium models have safety interlock systems. This means that neither model should start unless the PTO switch is disengaged and the transmission is in neutral. Both models also have operator presence systems. You should test these systems before mowing. To do this, lock the parking brake and put the transmission in neutral. Then start the engine and move the throttle to at least one half. Next, hold the operator presence bale down on the GS or the traction lever on the premium and engage the PTO. Next, when you release the bales on GS models, the engine and blade rotation must stop. On premium models, only the blades will stop while the engine continues running. You should also test the parking brakes. To do this, lock the brakes, put the transmission in neutral, then push and pull the machine. The brakes must prevent the machine from moving. If your mower fails either of these tests, be sure to have the problem repaired before mowing. Next, let's talk about starting and running your commercial walk-behind mower. To start and run your mower, open the fuel shutoff valve, move the shift lever to neutral, and make sure the PTO is disengaged. When cold starting, pull the choke knob up to choke the engine and push the throttle to at least one half. Next, turn the key to start on electric start models or on recoil start models to run, then pull the starter roll. As the engine warms, push the choke to open. To mow with premium models, push the shift lever to your desired gear and pull the traction lever halfway down to allow engagement of the PTO. Next, engage the PTO Push the throttle lever to full and the traction lever all the way down. To mow with the GS models, follow the same starting procedure. Then depress the operator presence bales, engage the PTO, and push the throttle to full. Next, select your speed, release the brake, and mow. Always remember that rotating blades are dangerous. Turn off the PTO and stop the engine before going near the cutting deck. Always keep hands, feet, and clothing away from rotating blades. When mowing an area for the first time, travel slow and cut high so you can learn the terrain, the best mowing pattern, and reduce your chances of hitting debris hidden in the grass. Mow grass when dry if possible. Wet grass can plug the mower and also leave unsightly clumps. If you want to use a sulky and ride while you mow, proceed slowly through dips in the terrain. The handlebars can come in contact with your legs and possibly hinder your operation, especially during turns. You should use a sulky primarily on flatter terrains. Make sure you are the only rider on the sulky. Additional riders can be struck by objects or they can be thrown from the machine. To transport the machine, Drive it forward onto a heavy-duty trailer. Leave the transmission in gear. Lock the parking brakes. Turn the key to off and close the fuel shutoff valve. Then secure the machine to the trailer with heavy-duty straps or cables. This brings us to the end of part four. In this final section, we will talk about some things you should do when you are done mowing. Before putting the mower away, always let the engine cool. Next, remove the belt shield and use compressed air to clean grass buildup around the deck, engine, air intake screen, and inside the discharge chute. Also, use water to rinse grass buildup from under the deck. Use John Deere's Molly High Temperature EP grease, or another grease recommended in the manual, to lubricate the wheel spindles and bearings. Finally, when the engine is cool, slowly remove the fuel cap and refuel the mower with fresh 87 or higher octane fuel. Fill the tank to the bottom of the filler neck and reinstall the fuel cap. 
This brings us to the end of this program. Your John Deere GS or premium commercial walk behind mower will give you years of quality mowing if you maintain it properly. Remember, as a John Deere customer, you are important to us. Always follow the safety instructions given in this video and printed in the manual. Thank you for watching.